Good morning children. Welcome to Common Rule Group of Schools Online Classes. Already yesterday we started the lesson India on the Leaf Features. Now, in this part we have completed what is the location of India, why India is known as Peninsula and uh, what is the importance of Indian Standard Time and uh, at the same time Indira Point. And I said already, India and relief features. India was broadly divided into six relief features. First one is Himalayas, indo gangetic Plains, Peninsular Plateau, Coastal Plain, Deserts and Islands. So yesterday we have completed Himalayas in detail. Today I will start my lesson with another feature that is indo gangetic Plain. So this is the second feature of our India, indo gangetic Plains. indo gangetic Plain is also known as Northern Plains. The Northern Plain is the composed of the interaction of three rivers that is Indus, Ganga and Brahmaputra. It is the interaction of three rivers. Now this northern plain is divided into three parts that is western part, central part and eastern part. So once again I am saying that indo gangetic plains are also known as northern plains. The northern plains is the interaction of three important rivers that is Indus, Ganga and Brahmaputra. The northern plain was divided into three important parts that is western part, central part and eastern part. The, now let us learn about the western part in detail. Western part is composed with Indus and its tributaries. Indus river and its tributaries. What are the tributaries of Indus? Jila, Chino, Ravi, Bios and Satlej. These are the tributaries of Indus. Most of this uh, Indus river is flowing in Pakistan. Only little bit, little portion in Punjab and Haryana plains in India. So the western part is formation with the Indus and its tributaries. Now come to our central part. So central part is also known as Ganga plain. So it is started from the rivers from Gagra to Tista. So this Ganga plain is extended in uh, Uttar Pradesh, Haryana, Bihar, Jharkhand and West Bengal. It is very very important part in our, according to our country. Now the next one is Eastern part. It is Brahmaputra Valley. Brahmaputra rivers. So, the eastern part is important for the Brahmaputra valley of Assam region. So, the Brahmaputra river is the main responsible for the formation of eastern part. So, this is about the indo gangetic plains. That is western part, central part and eastern part. Western part means Indus and its tributaries. Central part means Ganga and its tributaries. And the eastern part is Brahmaputra river. So here we can learn one more important feature that is dome. What is the meaning of dome? The fertile land between two rivers is called dome. So this is about the indo gangetic plains. So this is the second feature of our Indian relief features. Now let us learn about the third feature that is peninsular plateau. In ninth class, you already learned about what is plateau. Plateau is a flat topped and elevated portion above the surrounding area. In India, 
it is called peninsular plateau because india is covered by three side water this portion is called peninsular plateau it is covered by three side water already we discussed yesterday that is east bank east bay of bengal west to arabian sea and south indian ocean so this peninsular plateau is very important for crystallized igneous rocks and metamorphic rock and it is very famous for metallic or non metallic resources so this peninsular plateau also divided into two parts that is central islands and deccan plateau so this peninsular plateau is divided into two parts that is central islands and deccan plateau so what is the central island south of indo gangetic plains and north of narmada river this portion is called central islands that is south to indo gangetic plains and north to narmada river again the central highlands are divided into two parts that is marmara plateau and chota nagapur plateau central islands is malwa plateau the western and side of central islands is malwa plateau and the eastern side is chota nagapur plateau this chota nagapur plateau is rich in minerals once again i'm saying that chota nagapur plateau is rich in minerals now let us learn about the deccan plateau now i what i said central islands is down of indo gangetic plains and north of Narmada River. This Deccan Plateau is south to the and uh, the southern edge is Nilagiris. Now let us learn this the Deccan Plateau. The its northernmost edge of Deccan Plateau is uh, Sapura Ridge, and the eastern side is Mahadev, Michael, and Kaimur Ranges. Now let us learn about the boundaries of Deccan Plateau. north sapura range south nilagiris east eastern ghats this is eastern ghats and west western ghats so these are the boundaries of deccan plateau north sapura range east eastern ghats west western ghats and south nilagiris this is the deccan plateau now let us learn what is the differences between eastern ghats and western ghats so that is western ghats first we have to learn so the western ghats are parallel to the west coastal plains it is parallel to the west coastal plains here we can see that so it is stretched from narmada river to kanyakumari it is from narmada river to kanyakumari it is a continuous chain of hills you can see any break in this western ghats that is continuous chain of hills and this western ghats are very famous for palani and ana uh, anaimalai in tamil nadu and kottayam hills in kerala so the famous hill station uti it is also known as budaga mandalam is very famous in nilagiris so now let us learn the highest peak in nilagiris is doda betta so the highest peak in western ghats or south india is anaimudi it is in anaimalai hills once again i am describing this western ghats first one is western ghats are stretched from narmada river to nilagiris the second one is it is a continuous chain of hills the third one is it is very famous for hills like uh, uh, palani and anaimalai and kottayam hills kottayam hills are is in kerala and um, 
Here, the famous hill station is Uti, that is another name is Udagamandalam. It is very famous in Nilagiris. The highest peak in Nilagiris is Doda Betta. And the highest peak in Western Ghats or South India is Anai Mudi. Anai Mudi. So this is about the Western Ghats. Now come to our Eastern Ghats. So the Eastern Ghats are stretched from Mahanadi Valley to uh, Nilagiris. Here we can observe it. At the point of Nilagiris, the Western Ghats and Nil Eastern Ghats are meet each other. So it is the meeting place of Eastern Ghats and Western Ghats. So this Western Ghats, Eastern Ghats are parallel to the East Coastal Plain. So it is not a continuous chain like our Western Ghats. Here the famous hills are our Seshacharam. Now we are in Tirupati, no? So our Seshacharam hills we can see in Eastern Ghats. And uh, Nallamala, Palakondalu, Velikondalu, these are the very famous in this uh, Eastern Ghats. Our Seshacharam is also is in Eastern Ghats. And uh, the highest peak in Eastern Ghats is Aroya Konda. It is in our Andhra Pradesh, Vishakapatanam, Chintapalli. So that is the highest peak in Eastern Ghats. Students, I said three important peaks here. The first one is the highest peak in Nilagiris is Doda Betta. And the highest peak in South India is Anaimuri. And the highest peak in Eastern Ghats is Aroya Kunda. So it is in our Andhra Pradesh itself. Now let us learn another feature that is coastal plains. I think you understood this. Coastal plain. Coastal plains are the low lying land, so adjacent to the seas, that is the Bay of Bengal and Arabian Sea. So these coastal plains are very very important for development of agriculture. So this coastal plains also naturally divided into two parts that is west to coastal plain and east to coastal plain. Here I have observed this green portion. These are the coastal plains. This is west to coastal plain. This is east to coastal plain. Now the west to coastal plain is narrower compared to the East Coastal Plain. So it is uh, not a fertile uh, land you can see here. So whereas East Coastal Plain is very border compared to the West Coastal Plains. Now this East Coast, West Coastal Plain is divided into three parts. That is Konkan Coast, Kenara Coast, Malabar Coast. Children, before going to this, first we should know how many coastal states we have. We have nine coastal states that is Gujarat, Maharashtra, Goa, Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Odisha, and West Bengal. We have nine coastal states. Now, we can, there is no specific name for Gujarat coast and West Bengal coast. So, the coast of Maharashtra and Goa is called Konkan coast. The coast of Maharashtra and Goa, Konkan coast. And uh, the coast of Karnataka is known as Kenara coast. And uh, the Kerala coast is known as Malabar coast. Malabar coast. This is about the west coastal plain. This is not, it is very narrow here and uneven distribution of land. So it is divided into 
Locally, it is called as a Konkan coast, Kerala coast, and Malabar coast. Now, let us learn about the East Coastal Plain. So, it is very border and it is very fertile land. So, it is also divided into three parts that is, Coromandel coast. Next, Sarkar coast and Utkal coast. So, in Tamil Nadu, it is called as a Coromandel coast. Our Andhra Pradesh coast is known as Sarkar coast. And Odisha is known as Utkal coast. And here we can also see another feature that is lakes. So we have three important lakes that is Chilka Lake in Odisha and Kolleru Lake in Andhra Pradesh and Pulikat Lake in the, between the Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu. So these three important lakes also we can see in East Coastal Plain. So now I, I think you understood what are the names of these three. That is Tamil Nadu is Koramandal Coast and uh, uh, Andhra Pradesh is Sarkar Coast and uh, Odisha is Utkal Coast. So this is about the coastal plains. Now the next one is deserts. The next important feature is desert. Here the yellow portion is called desert. So it is the third desert. Third desert. It is the seventh largest desert in the world. So it is the leeward side of Aravalli. You know what is the meaning of leeward side? This side of mountains. Here this side is not receiving any type of rains. So for that it is called leeward side. So our third desert is leeward side of Aravalli. So, it is receiving very little amount of rainfall that is 100 to 150 millimeters per year. And this desert is a real region. And here, the internal drainage river is there, that is Lumi. Lumi is the only river in Thar Desert. What is the name of the river? Lumi. So, it is the only river in Thar Desert. And the longest canal in India, that is Indira Gandhi Canal. What is the name of the longest canal? Indira Gandhi Canal. Is the only water body of this Thar Desert. So this is about the Thar Desert. Now we will learn the last feature that is islands. So, islands. So, we have two types of islands. That is Andaman Nicobar Islands and Lakshadweep Islands. This Andaman and Nicobar Island is volcanic origin. It is in Bay of Bengal. And Lakshadweep Island is in coral origin. It is in Arabian Sea. So, we already discussed the southernmost edge of Indira Point is located in Nicobar Islands. So, it is here the Lakshadweep Island has 32 square kilometers. And here we can see famous flora and fauna. So, children, this is our Indian relief features. Thank you.